Hello everybody, this is Tekka. This is gonna be more of a uh, first impression and overview type video going over Chaos or KaOS, not completely sure, but this is a lean KDE distribution. We're gonna be talking about what makes it unique. Specifically, if we head over to this page, it is a independent distribution, but it is heavily inspired by uh, Arch Linux. It is a rolling release distribution. It uses Pac-Man for the package manager, but it has a really nice combination of other packages from other distributions to make a full and complete operating system. If we go down here, they talk about just that Pac-Man is used, but they also have components such as GFX boot from OpenSUSE, in addition to ImageWriter and HWinInfo, and the hardware database is from the Gentoo developer system. D originally came from Fedora, so just a whole bunch of different packages, like I said, combined to make this a uh, independent distribution. If we go over to packages, we can see some of the repositories. You have apps, build, core, and main. And here you could go ahead and kind of browse through all the applications they have available in their repositories, which they do host themselves. They have pretty good and extensive documentation, including the install hardware setup and all that fun stuff. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to bore you walking through the installation process. Uh, it's pretty standard. The main highlights were it allows you to pick if you want to install LibreOffice, no Office Suite, or if you want to use their minimal installer. In addition, it lets you pick if you want to install a, a bootloader or not, so that's pretty cool. And other than that, it's all pretty standard. Another thing that's cool is within the dialogue that starts when the system starts up during installation, it gives you an installation guide, which will kind of help you through that process. And if I head over here to news, we can see that there was a release recently where it was uh, this month, which goes over a lot of the system changes. Calamaris is the installer they use. It's gotten some significant updates. It's using Plasma 5.25, which is awesome. Speaking of, one thing I'm going to do real quick here, let's fix this. This is the default configuration. I'm going to enter edit mode, and let's put that where it belongs, in my opinion. And then maybe make this a little bit bigger so you all can see it. There we go. That's much better. It is a little cut off, but that's m the fault of my recording software. And in this little news page, it goes over a lot of the things we covered in our Plasma video, so I'm not going to cover all the Plasma changes if you want to check that out you can check out that video linked down below. Under here, under common notes, we can see that there's a ISO writer utility. It talks about the LibreOffice update. Personally, I opted not to install it. They have some of their own custom software that we're gonna be diving into, and everything you're seeing on the screen right now will be linked down below. And because this is a KDE Plasma focused distro, one of the selling points to this is all, all the development efforts are put into KDE Plasma and maintaining it and making sure that you're going to get a good experience with this specific desktop environment with this distro. So there's no other resources going to other additions like a GNOME, XFCE, or anything like that. And even all the way down to the web browser, this is Falcon, not my preference, but it's not bad. So before we start dinkering around in the actual desktop environment, let's go ahead and check out this application right here. This is basically their welcome screen. You can see a little toggle right here to launch on system start. And here it'll kind of give you a nice little shortcut set to all the things you may want to initially change or access. And it's definitely full of a lot of things. You can see here under customize, we have links to everything. And then we have packages, wallpaper, paper docs and it's designed very well it's not just your standard cut and dry type of welcome screen including about you can read more about it here i'll put some of this stuff that you're seeing in the description as well if you go over to customize this is all just kind of shortcuts so if i go plasma theme it's going to open up settings and let me select that and you can see what they have here by default and if i close out you have other options fonts virtual desktop window decorations but we'll get into that in just a sec under packages, this is pretty nice. So this will kind of give you a running head start into grabbing some of the packages you want. So for example, let's say I wanted to add Firefox, then I'd go back. And then let's say I wanted to add Thunderbird, and then I could go back. One thing I wish is if it had like a little toggle saying at least the packages you have selected. Video editors, let's say I wanted Caden Live back. Music players, eh, I don't really want any of those. Image manipulation, of course we want GIMP. And then for Office applications, oh, there's no only Office. Sad day, I'll get that later. So with those selected, I could click on Install Packages. It's gonna open up the terminal incredibly small. I'm not sure why KDE Plasma does that, but I know that's definitely not the first time. So there we go. Total download size, about quarter of a gig. Little under a gig total install size, so let's have some coffee. 
while we wait for that. Now I have gigabit internet, it's going about five megs a second, which isn't too bad, but it's definitely not the quickest repositories around. So it's been stuck on this for a minute. I'm assuming I probably should have completely updated the system first, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of there. And let's do that real quick. Let's update this system. I haven't ran uh, something with Pac-Man in a while, so S-Y-U. All right, cool. So then here we have wallpaper, which this is the latest one. If we go under popular, or oldest, or downloaded. I, I, I don't understand. Download? Oh, that's a cool progress bar though. Is, is this the only thing we got going? Oldest, downloaded, popular? Well, yeah, it's gonna be popular if it's the only one. <laughs> if we go to docs, we have info on additional kernels, all that fun stuff, switching the video. Uh, during the boot process, there's actually, it's pretty cool, there's an option to switch the non-free uh, proprietary drivers and there's a little thing that helps you pick the uh, resolution uh, when you first boot up into the system, which is really nice, especially if you're uh, in a virtual machine. That's rather handy. Under advanced, this is some typical stuff you might want to be diving into after a little bit. Uh, nothing we really want to do at the moment. About news, this is that article we were just covering. And then last but not least, there's quit, which will close out that application. Now, if we go over to the menu and kind of browse some of the pre-installed software, it's nothing too major. It's mostly all just KDE stuff. So we have Dolphin, Firefox, I did just add. We have some HP printer support. And if you do pick the minimal installation during installation, it will uh, not install that and it will not install a lot of things. But you can see just about everything that starts with a K that the world can imagine. Uh, KGDP, we have KWrite, KWallet, Octopi. So add or remove software, if I open this up, this is one of the software managers. So you can see everything's all synced up and I can use this to find things. So let's say I wanted only office, does not seem to exist in their repos. So Flatpak does. So we're gonna install this real quick. So if I click on it, we have some information, files, actions to be installed. And we have the terminal here. I'm gonna just right click, I'm gonna hit install. And then up here, let's go ahead and apply those changes. And this is cool, we can uh, just say yes, or we could run it in the terminal if we want to. I'm just gonna say yes, type in our password, and then just some information on flat packs in general. There we go and finish. So that's how you get applications with this. So this is a really nice Pac-Man front end. It reminds me a lot of uh, how the Yast graphical package manager is on OpenSUSE. So that's definitely a, uh, a nice little addition. Ooh, and it looks like they include MPV media player as the default, which I personally believe should be the default media player on all Linux distributions. So in addition, we have a bunch of QT stuff, which is to be expected. Stacer is installed, so that's an interesting choice. They have simple screen recorder installed by default. And Thunderbird I added, Vim is in there by default, so some of you guys will like that. Let's actually open up Stacer. I haven't used Stacer in a minute. Uh, CPU we're using 8% or lower. Uh, 1.7 gigs, do note that I've been opening applications, installing things, so it's probably a little less than this on boot. I'll put on the screen now what I'm getting as the memory usage on boot with this current installation I have. And here we can see some of the information. It's running the 5.17 kernel, which would be expected on a rolling release type system. And here we can see we are all over the place. Let's close that out, quit. So you're really not a lot on the application front, just some basic utilities that they decide to add. So with that, this is the latest version of KDE Plasma. So I'm just gonna kind of switch the uh, overall theming scheme back to what it probably should be in my opinion. So I'm gonna go dark for global. And it looks like they have some extra global themes. This right here is default. Oh, I can't see the buttons. Is it this one? Okay, cool, it was that one. Pro I'm probably gonna change that back real quick. Light, apply, there we go. Okay, now let's go in here and change this. Now I can see buttons, that's good. Still a little off for uh, changing a global theme for it to look like that. So that's one of them. Personally, I would probably just go with breeze dark the theming still kind of screwed up a little bit i'm gonna go with desktop layout as well and apply this there we go now we're looking a little bit better so color is one of the new things with this uh version of plasma that i like is you can pull the uh, thing from the wallpapers this like i said last time isn't a good example but let's say i want to pick a screen color and let's go with that okay apply there we go. And then of course we have window decorations and all that fun stuff. If we go over to icons, we can see some of the ones they have uh, included. Which for me, Breeze is fine. This moved over with that uh, desktop layout change. So let's go ahead and enter edit mode, drag this over here, 
and more options of course we want to use the floating panel and then bump this up to something legible like 62. so there we go now we're looking good the discover store icon is here and screwed up they disincluded it but didn't change the default configuration to remove that but yeah this is definitely an interesting system i could see why some people would want to use it it probably works pretty good on newer hardware i just got ubuntu working pretty good on that uh, laptop i have over there so i'm not going to try to install it on there i'm going to end off on the home page here of this and the talk about the use case uh targets users who have tried many operating systems distros desktop environments and have found they prefer a distribution that uses all of its available resources to work on one desktop to make it the best it can be. Now, based on my limited experience, I personally think that they could do a little bit better with some things. For me, the best KDE can be is with something like the Fedora KDE spin. That is remarkable. Same with OpenSUSE KDE and even KDE Neon if you're trying to get uh, straight from the KDE developers themselves. But if you're looking for a uh, Arch inspired thing with Pac-Man and uh, components from other distros, that might work best on your hardware. This is something worth trying out. I think if you're especially having hardware issues, this might be a good option. But for me personally, I'm definitely going to be sticking with the usual. And uh, with that, I do hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like this type of content. I do a lot of types of contents, hardware reviews, other tech products, software overviews, whatever it may be. Subscribe, ring that bell so you do not miss future uploads. Like this video if you did, dislike it if you did. With all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.